bill, patients who are, a lot of our patients are receiving lenalidomide frontline and in maintenance. Would you uh, continue or up regulate their lenalidomide dosing if they're progressing on maintenance? Or what, what about using pomalidomide in that setting? So pomalidomide is an important uh, imid that was approved a couple of years ago on the basis of uh, some studies in patients who'd received five to six lines of therapy. It's much more potent an immunomodulatory drug. You're talking about doses of two to four milligrams as opposed to uh, five to 25 milligrams. And it was shown uh, to have single agent activity in the high teens, but when combined with dexamethasone, uh, response rates were in the range of 30%. Uh, in addition, when uh, the drug was tested against high-dose dexamethasone, the combination of pomalidomide dexamethasone resulted in better progression-free survival and better overall survival in that trial. What do you think? Uh, do you, you think this is the drug of choice at people relapsing on Revlimid or? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think this is going to be an important backbone for patients who are progressing on Revlimid. And so I think there are different drugs you can add in. And so I think most of us now are not just using Palmdex alone. And you can for your older frail patients, but I think for more aggressive relapses, Carfilzomib Palmdex, as we've shown, uh, is very active, uh, and I think one of the most oh, important patients. You, you, patients of your study were quite heavily pretreated, right? Exactly. So we did a uh, phase one, two study um, with carfilzomib Palmdex, and those patients were fully rev refractory, not refractory on 10 milligrams or maintenance, on 25 milligrams of Lendex. So really fully refractory to lenalidomide. And when we did combination of carfilzomib and pomalidomide in that setting, we saw a 70% plus response rate in that setting. So I think it's a very active combination. You can also add now that we're off-label adding in DARA to that, even though there's no data, but the combination of DARA, POMDEX, is something Shouldn't we should... that stuff is, right? Exactly. Absolutely. So that's going to be an important combination for the future, but I think if you're looking for data-driven options, you know, POMDEX or Carfilzin POMDEX for the Revlimid refractory patient, I think, are good options. I'm struck that pomalidomide, if anything, has less side effects than lenalidomide, but it, it does seem to cause a bit more mild suppression. Mm -hmm. What, what is your thought about that, Ola? Oh, I have the same experience. It causes more myelosuppression. Many times I go from four to maybe three or even two milligrams. Uh, I have exactly the same experience that Jaytan uh, just shared. Combining it with the uh, corfilzomib uh, and dexamethasone is very powerful in patients who relapse on rev maintenance. And I've also used it uh, quite a lot as, as uh, off uh, uh, off-label in combination with daratumumab and dexamethasone. It works it very, very well. to me, I don't know if it's just me, that maybe it has a little bit less fatigue, less diarrhea. Uh, yeah. It has less, less of those, absolutely. But my suppression is probably the key problem. But I think you really have to be careful when you start combining it with mm -hmm. you know, cyclophosphamide or mm -hmm. with uh, the mild suppression, neutropenia, something yes. you have to watch. Yeah. But speaking of cyclophosphamide, Rashid Bad just had a paper in blood where they published cyclophosphamide, pomalidomide dex, and actually it's very, very active. It, it almost doubles the response rate. So, you know, and especially as we're thinking of those patients that live far away, the elderly that are gonna be on an all oral regimen, uh, they use lower, they use 400 milligrams weekly for cyclophosphamide, but it's just dramatic, the, the response rate increase. And we shouldn't forget, of course, pomalidomide, bortezomib combinations, which there's been a number of presentations and, and publications, which is also highly, highly active. I, I do think it's the most potent of the imids, and it's just coming in the back end to help us with this. And yesterday we saw a presentation on even combining with exazomib mm -hmm. or some mm -hmm. of these newer drugs. And we'll see it also combined with elotuzumab as well. We talked about different monoclonals. So we'll see yep. some data coming out with POM plus elo coming out in the near future as well. So I think that'll be exciting. So it's a little bit of a backbone in the first relapse setting these days, it seems to me. Would you agree? I agree. Yes. Yeah. yes.